And welcome once again to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We're glad you're with us today. You know, we're here every week talking to interesting people and discussing interesting subjects. And when this show started many, many years ago, we kind of had a legal slant to the show. And yes. sometimes we stray away from that in the, in the, to uh, take on some very interesting topics. But we're back on that topic today meeting uh, two interesting people. Yes, we're going to meet two uh, Oklahoma County District judges that uh, are sitting judges now. And we have had on this show uh, uh, a judge from every level of the judiciary except two. One is the United States Supreme Court. We haven't done that yet, but we're working on it. And the second is the district judge level at the state in the state court system. So we've had the Oklahoma Supreme Court Chief Justice. We've had the Court of Criminal Appeals presiding judge, Courts of Civil Appeals presiding judges, and the like. But we've never had a state district judge sitting, so we're going to have two of those today. I might tell you, Mick, that the Oklahoma County Courthouse, there are 34 judges sitting and 12 of them are women out of the 34 and we're having two of them on today. Wonderful. It's all coming up today on The Verdict. A greener planet, cleaner air, a healthy economy, national security, a smaller deficit and a stronger dollar. Green jobs, better jobs, energy independence, warmth and light and transportation. These are the reasons Chesapeake champions natural gas every day. Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma working with the owners of small and medium sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. Wilsey Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. And Kent's going to introduce today's guests. Very pleased today to have two sitting uh, district judges from the 7th Judicial District here in Oklahoma County with us. On my right, Judge the Honorable uh, Noma Gurich, the judge of the 7th Judicial District. She grew up in Indiana, graduated with Larry Bird from Indiana State <laughs> University. Uh, the Go Sycamores, as she told me to say. Graduated magna cum laude. I don't think Larry Bird graduated magna cum laude. <laughs> Uh, she did her law work at the University of Oklahoma, was in private practice for a number of years, served as ten, uh, for 10 years as a judge on the Workers' Compensation Court, and she's been a sitting district judge here in Oklahoma County for 12 years. She is involved in many law-related and community activities, but this is her first visit to the verdict. Welcome. Glad to have you. Thank you. Uh, to my left is Judge uh, Lisa Tipping Davis. Judge Davis is a district judge also in the uh, uh, courthouse in Oklahoma City, 7th Judicial District. She grew up in Tulsa. She did her undergraduate work at OU with distinction and did her law work uh, uh, at OU the same way. She was in private practice for a number of years, was an assistant attorney general for 11 years, and uh, she was Governor Henry's uh, general counsel for uh, about six years prior to uh, being appointed to the bench. She's been on the bench just now a few months, but we're sure glad to have you. We're going to get a kind of a, uh, an alternative mm -hmm. perspective of a sitting judge who's been there a while and one that's brand mm -hmm. new and see how, they, how those perspectives differ. But welcome. Thanks. Glad to have you. Thank judge you. Courage, why don't you give us a little bit of your background prior to becoming a judge? What were you doing? I was in private practice for approximately 10 years in Oklahoma City, and I was very fortunate, I think. Um, I've been out of law school a number of years, and when I got out of law school, I actually had the opportunity to be involved in two firms that uh, specialized in litigation, and there weren't very many women litigators in those days, and that was in the late 70s, early 80s. And uh, 
I really got a wealth of experience there. And, um, and Was there then, a specific aspect of the law that you were concentrating on at that time? Well, I started out doing mostly insurance defense. Um, after the Penn Square Bank went down, the firm I was with did a lot of uh, security fraud defense on the civil side, not criminal. It was all pretty much a civil practice. Uh, litigation in all uh, state courts went to many, many different counties and, and had cases and tried cases, also federal courts. So I got a lot of really good uh, trial preparation and trial experience. Okay. And after that? Uh, in 1988, uh, I was fortunate to be appointed to uh, the bench for the first time by Governor Henry Bellman, and that was to the Workers' Compensation Court. Served there about 10 years, and I've been downtown since 1998. I was appointed by Governor Keating and then immediately had to run for an election, which I was <laughs> successful at. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and here in this decade? In this decade, uh, well, this decade I'm on the Oklahoma, or on the uh, Oklahoma County Seventh Judicial District uh, District Court. I am on the civil side of the docket assignments and handle cases over 10,000. Primarily, um, people always want to know what does that involve. It involves car accident lawsuits. It involves contract disputes, uh, oil and gas disputes. Uh, it can involve uh, family trust disputes. Um, about anything that people can litigate and the value is over $10,000, it will end up uh, in my court. I'm also presiding judge of the uh, multi-county grand jury, which is under the, um, the umbrella of the Attorney General's office, and this is my second multi-county grand jury that I've been presiding on. So, to that extent, you'd be involved in the criminal side? That I am, uh, to that extent. Yeah. Uh, judge Davis, uh, let me ask you the same thing. Tell us about your background, how you came to be a judge. Well, similar to Judge Gurich, when I graduated in 84, there wasn't still a whole lot of females that were litigators, and so I was at a private practice firm doing litigation, civil litigation, and I did that um, 84 to 92 when I went to uh, General Loving. Susan Loving hired me at the Attorney General's office, and I was doing litigation there um, all over the state of Oklahoma, traveled a lot, I went to all the outlying counties. Uh, Judge Ed uh, General Edmondson kept me. Uh, at the Attorney General's office in doing litigation and then I moved to general counsel work for the Attorney General's office in about mm, 2001 mm -hmm. and worked for the Oklahoma State Regents for Higher Education uh, doing their working with them on their uh, general counsel stuff. And then I moved over with uh, Governor Henry in uh, 2003. So I was Could with you him. compare the difference between working in the Attorney General's office and working in the Governor's office? What are the differences between serving the state in different capacities? Um, very different. <laughs> oh. yeah, the first off, at the Attorney General's office, the ma majority of the time I was doing litigation, so I was back in the courtroom. And just the last few years was uh, doing general counsel work. And, and were you involved in any high-profile cases we might remember? Um, well, I did a lot of the class action of uh, multi-million-dollar class action cases, so mm -hmm. yeah, some of them. But um, for the state regents, was doing their general counsel work was more what I was doing for Governor Henry. Um, which is really, uh, someone explained it to me, when you're in litigation, you've got a puzzle where all the pieces are already there, and in general counsel, you're cutting the puzzle. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's kind of the difference of it. You, sure. <clears throat> well, let me ask you both this. Uh, you came out of law school uh, a number of years ago when there weren't very many women uh, practicing law, uh, certainly not very many on the bench. Uh, today we're graduating roughly, uh, I know it varies from year to year, but roughly 50 percent of our law graduates are, are women, and yet we certainly aren't at a 50 percent level on the bench yet, but we're uh, making some progress. In the opening uh, part of the show I mentioned I thought there was approximately 12 uh, women on the bench in Oklahoma County out of 34 or so, or some odd. I guess it takes a while after you get out of law school mm -hmm. to build up the experience and credentials to be qualified to be a judge. I think that's true. I, I think that's true, and um, and that and that's part of the thing that um, people. I, I talk to younger women attorneys, and and they don't have very much um, institutional memory <laughs> <laughs> about how things were in Oklahoma City and Oklahoma County. And actually, when I was looking to become a judge, my perception was that I had a better chance of being appointed to the Workers' Compensation Court because there had been historically more women serving in that role. At the time I uh, was appointed in 1988, it was before um, Judge Blaisdell, now Roberts, uh, was mm -hmm. appointed. The only female downtown on the district bench was uh, Judge Arthur Laurie Rakestraw, and that had been true for 
I mean, many, many, many years. And so there really wasn't much opportunity. Um, the interesting thing to me is, even though there are so many more women in law school, we are not seeing anywhere near 50% women litigators. It is still uh, very much dominated by men in that profession. Why do you think that is? Well, you know, when I got to law school, there was no such thing as um, discussion about quality of life or um, having an outside life. And so when you, I remember my first, um, my partner, well, he was, I was an associate there, but, but Alex Cheek said to me, you know, you need to be married to the law. And uh, we literally had to be married to the law. And you didn't really have a lot of balance. There was not a lot of work-life mm -hmm. balance. I think that has, as times have come forward, that there's more emphasis on that for men as well as women. And I think uh, people get more creative in their careers. Um, and so we see women who maybe are, are fairly young in, the, in litigation, but then we don't see them again for a while. Um, sometimes they have other commitments with family and so mm -hmm. forth. Uh, sometimes it's just um, they may specialize. I think people specialize more than they used to in all sorts of litigation. Mm -hmm. It used to be if you were a litigator, you would just litigate at everything. I think as time has gone by, probably there's more specialties. Um, and so that would, that would categorize women uh, in some ways. There's a lot of stress in litigation, as, as you well know, and, and also Judge Davis well know. And uh, it's not something that's right for everyone. Uh, but we certainly do try to encourage young lawyers, men and women, any way we can and uh, be as much of a positive role model as we can be. Mm -hmm. Judge Davis, you've been on the bench now about uh, four or five months, I guess. Uh, uh, what was the biggest surprise to you uh, that you didn't anticipate? Um, well, the first week I got to watch a trial, and the second week I tried a case, yeah. and uh, computers weren't up and running yet. Uh, my bailiff had just started that Monday, and uh, a lot of the other judges helped out, uh, and their staff helped out, and they got my jury instructions ready for us because, like I said, we didn't have our computers weren't up and running. and and that's kind of continued. The, when I've had a conflict, other judges have taken over my docket. I've covered dockets for other judges when they had conflicts. Going to go down to Cleveland County in April, try a case down there because they're short of a judge. And so that's just the kind of spirit of co cooperation was uh, refreshing. Well, that's great. Mm -hmm. Let me get us to a break. We're vi visiting with uh, Judge Gurridge. Uh, judge Davis will be back with more. You're watching The Verdict. I'm Major Matthew Newmeyer, currently stationed at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, and I'm a Chickasaw. In 2003, when I was part of the drive to Baghdad, I found being a soldier was going to be a lot more than just firing your weapon and being in a combat situation. Being a warrior, but also being the good citizen, that is probably why American soldiers are so respected. Because here are 18 to 20 year olds, one minute, they're in combat, people are shooting at them. The next minute, they're treating children just as if they were in their own home. That warrior ethos that the Chickasaws had uh, also translates directly to what you do as a soldier. Strength, integrity, uh, the grace, and the idea that you're part of a greater community, that you give to that community, uh, that you find it important to be the best you can be at what you're doing. What's your idea of security? A good paying, sustainable job, a solid economy, less dependence on foreign energy? We can achieve it with the help of one industry, American oil and natural gas. It creates energy, jobs, and a strong economic base we can rely on. New technologies open vast reserves that will supply our energy needs far into the future. Because security, by every definition, is worth protecting. set of the verdict. We're visiting with Judge Nomi Gurich and Judge Lisa Tipping Davis about uh, their work um, uh, at the uh, judicial level. And Kent, where do you want to go from here? Well, I want to talk a little bit about resources. I want to start uh, perhaps with Judge Davis and then throw the same question to Judge Gurich. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in your experience on the bench uh, in the state court system, uh, how are the resources? Are they adequate? Do they need to be supplemented? If you could uh, be in a perfect world as a judge, uh, what would you add that you don't have now? 
Um, well, I'm not a real technology buff, but I like computers, and uh, the the equipment at the courthouse is pretty archaic. And the uh, there's uh, copiers are only on the third floor. There's not a copier in every office, much less every floor. And so when you're trying to get 18 sets of jury instructions down, your bailiff has to go down and stand in line to just make copies. And uh, it's the technology is pretty behind. But I, I, my understanding is they're going to work on that, and they're got some plans in place. So I think it'll help save some trees and probably uh, reduce some errors if they can get some new systems in place. Judge Gurich, what's your take on that? Well, I agree on the technology, of course. Um, as I mentioned to you, I usually tell attorneys when they're setting up for their PowerPoint display and so forth, well, we do have electricity, and that's about <laughs> it. Uh, and I do happen to have a pull-down screen in my courtroom, which is a you know big innovation. But um, I think that would certainly be a, a great value to all of us. The other thing that we don't have is we don't have we do have a, a wonderful uh, bailiff. Each of us in Oklahoma County are fortunate to have a bailiff. That's not true across the state when you ask about the whole state. Uh, we also have a court reporter uh, at our um, in our suite and we have a deputy court clerk. A lot of judges around the, the state don't have that kind of resource even today. Um, but something that would be very beneficial, of course, would be some law clerk situation. Uh, occasionally I've had Oklahoma City University, um, Tulsa University, even the University of Minnesota uh, students who have come in the summer sometimes and have interned for me, and they get course credit for it. And uh, even though they're not, they're three L's typically, third year of law school, so they're of some help. Um, they can't do a lot of uh, what I do, but they can certainly do a lot of legal research and they can check things. And even though I'm on the civil side, uh, any time an inmate who's in, um, who has a grievance, uh, a disciplinary issue in prison, they file a civil lawsuit. It becomes either a writ of mandamus or there's a new procedure that's a petition for judicial review that's basically a due process review. So I have um, just a myriad of complicated civil cases as well as occasionally some complicated criminal questions that if I had uh, the services of a, of a law student or a law clerk, it would certainly be beneficial, I think, to not only me, but I think to the practicing attorneys, and it would be more efficient use of all of our time. You know, if, if, uh, if Hollywood is any judge, the American public is fascinated by the legal system and, and, and judges and lawyers, and I, I would assume at any time of the day, if you start clicking through the channels, eventually you're going to find a courtroom scene of some sort. What is the general public missing from what really takes place in, in the judicial courtroom? And <coughs> obviously your, your cases don't get wrapped up in an hour. No. All, all neatly and bundled with 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 with, with the, a confession with, 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 at the end. No. The confession no. at no. the end. No. But what is your what, what what is your take on how it is portrayed on on the big screen or on the television set and and what the way it is? Uh, not very realistically. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, one uh, it moves so slowly in real life. Uh, you know, my docket's 1:30 docket. We're lucky to wrap it up by five o'clock, and there's been a lot of time. People have just had to sit and wait for their mm -hmm. turn because there's so many cases there. And I think that's, of course, not at all portrayed in, in, in Well, television. Judge Gersh, do people walk in sometimes with a perception that it's going to be like, you know, some big movie mm -hmm. that they had seen and they're a little bit disappointed at the, at the pace or at, at the way things uh, roll out? Well, I think that's what we try to start off in the jury selection process, educating the jurors. I mean, I think that's what my job is as a, as a trial judge throughout mm -hmm. the trial is to educate the jury on their expectation, what's coming next. What would and you tell them? Well, we, we typically tell them that it's not uh, TV, but my view is um, it's a lot more interesting than TV. I'm, I, well, first of all, I'm not a big TV fan. Maybe that's part of it. And I, <laughs> uh, but I do think that when people you come... You watch the verdict, though, I do. Sure. Yes, oh. right, right, <laughs> and, and many other things than Cox Cable. So, uh, but I think that um, uh, it, once they get invested, their time invested in something, and they're paying attention, I think it becomes extremely interesting to them. Um, and I think that the people who have good uh, experiences on juries, and I think most people do in Oklahoma County, once they get on a jury and serve on a jury, um, we respect their time, we respect uh, their lives, that they've got busy lives, and we all try to be as efficient as we can. Even though it may take a little while, I think we try to explain to them why as, as time is going through. I think it's obvious to them why things take a little bit of time. Um, and I do think that 
the stories they hear and the and the fact patterns are are actually you can't make this stuff up. You could you couldn't <laughs> write this stuff. So um, I do think that that it's it's a great experience, and I certainly encourage everyone in every walk of life and every profession. Um, to serve on a jury because I do think it's way more entertaining than what they think it's going to be. Interesting. Let's talk about size of caseload, docket caseload, uh, particularly in Oklahoma County. Uh, on a given six month or year period, how many cases would you be uh, having on your docket? <laughs> 2,500? I would say that on the civil dockets, probably because we all are very conscious of, of doing our jobs and closing cases at the same time they're being open, I would probably estimate you can get somewhere upwards toward 1,500 pending at any one time. Um, I'm sure the criminal docket's probably more congested than that. Uh, we have, I think the statistics show that we have at least a third more case activity in Oklahoma County than even Tulsa County, which is our close, closest size. Uh, that's a point I wanted to also make. Uh, there is, uh, is there not, uh, Judge Davis, a pretty wide disparity between, on caseloads between, for instance, Oklahoma County and then some of the much more yeah. smaller mm -hmm. populated counties. Sure, sure. What are, you're on the criminal side. Yeah. Uh, what's your docket like? Um, on non-jury weeks, I see 150 to 200 cases uh, a week. And I've been there four months and I've already tried four cases. So, I mean, it's, it's a pretty heavy load. Well, um, <clears throat> in that connection, is there, are we moving the cases out on the criminal side as fast as we need to, or do we need to speed it up? Well, we sure try to. We uh, get a printout from the jail to see how many are in custody, mm -hmm. and I sure watch mine to try and uh, keep my ones that are in custody moving as fast as possible. Are people in jail today <clears throat> longer than they used to be or need to be? What's, what's your perception on that? I don't know. I, unfortunately, I don't have this background. Judge Grudge might have the background, but I, my impression from talking to the public defender's office is that, no, we're pretty good about moving. But there the is there is a, a tension to that. Oh, yes. And it's, an, it's a priority matter. Yes. Uh, what about your cases, uh, Judge Gurich? Are, you, are they moving out as fast, do you think, as they could be, or should the, could there other, uh, uh, could ma do you have mandatory uh, alternate dispute resolution procedures that you uh, require litigants to go through? Well, they're not mandatory, but we certainly uh, encourage everyone to go through mediation if possible. Um, I think that the feeling that I have, I think most of the judges on the civil trial side have the feeling that if someone wants to move their case, they can do it. If, they, if the case needs a little bit longer, a bit of time to develop, uh, such as a medical malpractice case or some complex oil and gas case, obviously those things don't need to be tried in a year. Um, but I think that we feel like we can accommodate people. Sometimes uh, we can try a couple of cases in a week because of the nature of some of our cases. Uh, although it has gotten more complex in the 12 years I've been in Oklahoma County, uh, even simple civil matters seem to take <coughs> a lot longer than they used to. Everything is just more complex. Part of the reason is we have a lot more pro se litigants than we used to. I think we're all seeing that at every yeah. division, at every level, uh, and that slows things down a little bit. Um, but life is just complicated. There's just no getting around it. Judge Davis, in the final uh, minute or so we have, uh, take about half of it and tell us uh, uh, why you enjoy being a judge and what do you think your attributes are in being a good judge? Well, uh, last night I was at the grocery store and a lady checking me out, she said, I know you. And, and she said, you were a judge. And she said, her boyfriend was in my courtroom not too long ago. And she said, you listened to him and you paid attention to him and uh, you were kind to him and, and they perceived that I was fair and uh, they may not have liked what I did, but they at least thought I was fair. And so. That's uh, hopefully people that come into my courtroom have that impression of me that I'm going to take my time and, and listen to people and be thoughtful. That's the ultimate fair. test, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Judge Gurich, same well, question. I, I, I certainly admire Judge Davis in her abilities in four months on the bench because I think she's got it right. And I think what we what we owe people is respect, and that's what they should come when they come to the court. They should get respect, and we should pay attention to them. And then we need to follow the law and do what we need to do. We're going to have to make that the final comment. Thank you both for coming on the show. Thank you very much. Final word after this. Dan Blankenship has stopped at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Leading it fourth and seven on the Tiger, for the six yard line. 38 seconds on the clock. The Tigers have no choice but to go. Uh.
good life comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record. Since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political, government, and business leaders have turned to the McCarville Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarville Report online. Welcome back to the set of the verdict. We're wrapping up the show on district judges. We had uh, Judge Gurich and Judge Davis in today. Yes, uh, they're uh, very uh, two of the best uh, that are at the courthouse, and we're pleased they'd give us their time. You know, somebody asked me once, um, uh, didn't I want to be a judge? I said, no, I really don't want to because they work too hard. <laughs> they really do. They have huge caseloads, no law clerks, and they work just enormous hours, and these are two of the best we have uh, down at Oklahoma County. They were a delight to have on the show. We have a couple of web addresses if you'd like more information or like to contact them. You can reach them at judgegurich.us or judgelisadavis.com. And, of course, you can go to our website and uh, tell us about a show or a guest that you'd like to see on an upcoming edition of The Verdict. That web address is theverdict.tv. We'll see you next week. The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.